Big Sky Outdoors, powered by Town Pump, fueling your next outdoor adventure, is also brought to you by Counter Assault, your ultimate protection in the wild, by Montana Army Navy, get it, get out, and live it. And the Outdoor Report is provided by Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. Outdoors. We're here at Big Sky, Montana with Dan Egan of SkiClinics.com. We're going to go have some fun today. Hey, it's got a beautiful day here. Join us right here at Big Sky. Let's do it, Joel. You ready to rumble? I'm ready to rumble. Let's do it. Hey, everybody. My name is Ken Scott. I'm the Northwest Elon rep. And we're here at Big Sky for the Dan Egan Steep and Deep Camps. Skiing some uh, great Elon skis. Right now I'm on the Spectrum 105. It's 105 underfoot. It's got Amphibio rocker, which is uh, rockered on the outside, camber on the inside. Great skis, super fun on the, on the groomers. Great in the powder, and we're having a great time. If you want to check these out, go to your local Bob Ward store in the state of Montana. Hi everybody, I'm Dan Egan and uh, Big Sky is my western home and this is where I do my camps in the winter right here at Big Sky, Montana. I'm Sheila Chapman, I'm the public relations manager here at Big Sky Resort. Uh, we have 5,800 skiable acres on four different mountain tops that are all connected by chairlift. We have a 4,350 vertical drop, so we have pretty much all the type of terrain that anyone could be looking for. I do camps all over the world. Uh, I do my camps in here at Big Sky at Killington, Vermont. I do them in South America at Valle Nevado, Chile, and Val d'Isere, France. And in between all of that, you might find me heli skiing in Alaska or Iceland. Typically, the skiers that ski with me are solid intermediates and up. You don't have to be a rip-roaring uh, heli skier to come ski with me. Uh, matter of fact, I prefer people that want to break through, somebody who's been in a rut that hasn't really gotten to the next level. That's a perfect skier for me to get a hold of. Uh, I just basically wanted to learn to ski uh, steep shoots better and uh, hopefully get prepared to do a heli ski trip one of these days. You know, here uh, at this camp, uh, we have uh, a variety of skiers from all over the country. We have people from back east, we have people from New York, we have people from California, we have uh, people from Mississippi. I am uh, 65 and I've been skiing for about 50 years, but only as a recreational skier, just once a, one week a year, something like that. And so my skills are not where I would like them to be. We have all one range of ages. Today, here at Big Sky, we had 10 years old all the way up. Uh, so we had families with us, we had all sorts of people skiing. So what we do is we break them up by ability into three different groups. I rotate around through the group, so every half day I ski with another group of people. And that, that really makes it work. So the instructors here at Big Sky are top notch, and we've been working together so long we know what we're all teaching. One of my goals in teaching the advanced ski clinics and the steep camps is to really educate people on one safety and through safety the freedom they can find in the mountains. Okay, so it's like this. You're in a slide, you roll, and you press. My ankle. Oh. You want to make sure your feet are all the way below so that you don't end up sideways because you could go into a barrel roll, okay? Do it again. Okay, that's the, that's the best case scenario is that your feet are already below your head. But what happens if your feet are above your head, okay? You roll to your stomach and you look, look up the hill and flutter kick your feet and you'll pivot around and your feet will be below your head. There you go, keep going, perfect. Well done. Well, I teach total body skiing, so I'm gonna get you tuned in to where your hips are over your feet. We're gonna talk a lot about the 
transition between turns. And we're gonna talk more importantly is how to decelerate in the fall line so that you don't accelerate out of control. So when I come through here and I spring up, people walk away from these camps with confidence. They walk away from these camps skiing things they've never skied before, but they also walk away from these camps with friendships. Uh, people that come to these camps are motivated to ski, and often they form their own groups and ski together other places. Well, the truth is, I get as much out of the camps as the participants do. I get motivated. I get inspired when I see people ski better. It jazzes me up. I find that at these camps, my energy level increases and I start skiing better. After three days here, it's been awesome. And people have skied things they never thought they could have skied before. And that just psychs me up so much that I'm gonna do it all over again next weekend. So I really wanna invite people to come out, ski with me and, and find the magic here at all, in all terrain skiing. Join me, Dan Egan, for adventure ski trips and camps around the globe. Camp locations are Big Sky, Montana, Killington, Vermont, Val d'Isere, France, and Valley, Nevado, Chile. Come learn the secrets of all-terrain skiing, plus strategy and tactics that will expand your winter world. Find us on the web at SkiClinics.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook. SkiClinics.com, winter education for every generation. Right behind me, we have Everett's 8800, which is our new restaurant on top of Andesite Mountain at our resort. It just opened up this winter, and it was open for breakfast and lunch. But now, on Fridays and Saturdays, we've opened it up for dinner. It's a pretty intimate dining experience. Uh, you could take the Ram Charger chair list up at 6 o'clock at night. You do make reservations for that, and you can make that on open table. And they have a three-course um, meal that you can choose your courses from. They do a salad, they do the main course, they do a dessert. They also have a cocktail hour. So it's kind of a fun thing to do with uh, family and friends. So having that restaurant open on Fridays and Saturdays is fabulous. But we also are started our Sunset Saturdays. They always start the first Saturday in March and go through until we close, which will, the last Sunset Saturday will be April 18th. But the Ram Charger chairlift, which accesses the restaurant behind me, will stay open until five o'clock every Saturday. So you get an extra hour of skiing um, as the days get longer in Montana. But we do have other eateries around the mountain as you're skiing around. I call them uh, eatery shacks. We have our you know, burrito shack. We have a soup kitchen shack. We also have like the Burger and Brat Shedhorn Grill. So different places you can actually ski to. When you go over to our Moonlight side, you find the Headwaters Grill, which is great. You can just ski right up there. They have a, a variety of food there as well. And then also in our main mountain village, we have a variety of restaurants from Mexican to Italian. So we still have a lot of season to go. We have a lot of events happening. We're having our first ever Whiskey A Go Go uh, in April, and that's gonna be a fun event that's also gonna be in combination with a brand new ski, it's gonna be called the Ski Mo, and it's the Ski Mountaineering Race. So it, right now it was invitation only, but next year we're gonna open it up to the public, so it might be something great to check out, see if you wanna do next year. And then of course, what season can't end without the famous Big Sky Resort Pond Skim? So the Pond Skim will be the last Saturday of the season, which is April 18th. We do close on April 19th, and we get over 5,000 spectators coming to watch some crazy people in fun costumes skimming across some water.
So spring skiing is great at the biggest skiing in America. We still have a lot of ski, ski time to go. We close for the winter season on April 19th, but we start back up on June 6th for our summer season and be looking for our brew fest, our vine and dine, as well as the rut 50K race. check out all the events we still have going till the end of the season at bigskyresort.com slash events. You know, really what we're after is all-terrain skiing. We want people to remain in balance. I firmly believe that with intermediate and advanced skiers, it's not a talent issue, it's a balance issue. And most people are out of balance when they go out onto the steeps and they're scared. And that's why they don't go very often. But as you gain confidence and you realize it's about balance, not talent, you can start to explore more and more of the mountain. Open the world up. Okay, the bigger the world, less intimidating. The more you look here, the more you're surprised. Once you start to look at the slope differently with some strategy and tactics, your whole world changes. You ski it differently. So as you gain balance, you gain confidence, and you see more of this beautiful place. Big Sky is a great place to take a steep camp because there's such a variety of terrain. You can build up to skiing off of Lone Peak. You can ski in the bumps, you can ski in the trees. There's different places to practice corner entries. So that when you get up on the big mountain into the steep and the narrow, you're ready to go. We're really working on dynamic motion, giving people a bigger range of motion. Because when you have a dynamic motion, you have more control. And when you have more control, you ski more of the hill. Dynamic motion comes from being small and tall, short and long, okay? And once you start to add that dynamic motion, you start to get controllable acceleration versus uncontrollable acceleration, which is really the goal. Really, if you're a solid intermediate or up, come skiing with me. Uh, I can help you. It doesn't have to be intimidating. It doesn't matter whether you just want to ski better or travel to Europe or Alaska to ski. Uh, these clinics can help you because when it comes to dynamic range of motion, uh, being calm and strong, fluid and loose, that helps all abilities. So it's not just about skiing the rad, gnarly stuff. It's about becoming a better, more efficient skier. My name is Steve Kasson. Uh, even though my accent says Brooklyn, I'm living in Los Angeles, California now. Oh, we got to ski with the Jedi Dan Egan in Big Sky, Montana. Always, uh, you know, pushing the limits, making you, uh, giving you the tools to ski down faces and terrain you never thought possible. So your dreams can come true here. Life is good. Ski it with Dan. Uh, I started off with uh, this group with uh, Dan Egan's uh, Steeps Clinic because I wanted to ski the Big Calore up top here at Big Sky. And uh, it always uh, gives me just a little bit of uh, anxiety when I look up there at it, so as it does most people. And uh, there was also the added uh, uh, concern that I don't handle the uh, icy, crusty type of skiing on the steeps as well. And so those are the two primary reasons that I signed up for the clinic. The 
it's the only place really in North America you can ski this much vertical by yourself, which is very special. Remember what we learned yesterday really too in uh, moving dynamic motion. Range of motion on the steeps is gonna be better than lack of motion on the steeps, okay? We want you to stay on top of that ski and keep the feet underneath you. And that's gonna be a great morning. So Ross, one of our ski patrollers just skied the Kular and reported that's very, very firm in there. It's edgeable, but firm. And I told the folks on the first car that were with me, just looking up at it, that top section is pretty technical. The traverse in and a little bit of side slip down, kind of choppy snow. It's gonna be a lot of hop turns, a lot of side slipping. It's a no fall zone. We're gonna send people through there one at a time. Dan's gonna be at the top. It's a, it's a really special experience to be up here before public and to drop into the big. So uh, definitely a lot of thanks to Ben for all his hard work on the ski patrol. Uh, and it is one of the most special descents in North America, for sure. 1,400 feet, you're skiing it alone. There's no other place like it in the country. Army Navy is your hunting headquarters. It's the best place around when you're serious about saving money on the things you need to go hunting. Knife sharpeners, wool gloves, backpacking meals, optics, socks, boots, insoles, stoves. Why, it's a virtual hunter's checklist. All name brands and all at fantastic savings. On Highway 2 in Evergreen and Highway 93 in Whitefish. MontanaArmyNavy.com. Here's this week's outdoor report by our friends at Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. So this is your typical Didymo mat. But... More than 10 years ago, fish biologists noticed large algae mats typical. taking over the Kootenai River below Libby Dam. Didymo sphenia geminata, we call it Didymo, was very apparent. It took over uh, many portions of the river, the, the bottom, the substrate, and immediately we had concerns of the impact, whether or not it was impacting the trout population in the Kootenai River. At the same time, there were reports of Didymo becoming a nuisance around the world, and biologists soon learned Didymo blooms could alter the bug structure of a river. It's not so much impacting trout themselves, but basically their food source. Today, researchers are looking to see if Didymo outbreaks are impacting trout populations and also looking at the cause of Didymo growth. Didymo is actually a native species to Montana and Idaho. And what we found was that Didymo, most of the time, it occurs in its natural state. So the nuisance mats are kind of a new thing. And that's what we're most concerned about is what changed to force this well-behaving diatom into these gelatinous mats that cover the entire river bottom. One Didymo outbreak theory is due to a nutrient imbalance in the water. So for the first time in Montana, researchers are artificially adding nutrients to a river. And so we think that by manipulating the nutrients in the water, we can kind of understand why this species is going to this phase more commonly. These studies will conclude next year. And researchers hope to learn more about Didymo impacts and possibly find a way to control them. I'm Winston Greeley, out among Montana's fish, wildlife, and parks. And it is one of the most special descents in North America, for sure. 1,400 feet, you're skiing it alone. There's no other place like it in the country. And so let's uh, boot up. 10-4, Ben. Garrett's in the gate. Hold on. The report is it's a little uh, chattery on top. All right. All right, Garrett's dropping in. Yeah, a little bit of side slip down, kind of choppy snow. It's going to be a lot of hop turns, a lot of side slipping. It's a no-fall zone. Man, and you ski above the first narrow bit. Make sure you're over your feet, looking down the hill. Uh, don't make your world small, make your world big by looking up and looking down through the, through the gut, okay? Once you're through that, ski it right down to the dog leg and then the snow is gonna get good, so have fun. <laughs>
<laughs> he was making noises like that. <laughs> he finishes on his feet. Yeah. <laughs> So just got done skiing the big with Dan, Ben, and Jason. Phenomenal, fantastic ski. At one point up on the ridge, we had five, uh, five skiers up there, everybody on a lawn. Everybody ripped it. Great time, eh, Dan? Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's a reliable. You know, that's what I like about it. You know every turn, what to expect. The feedback is so reliable from these skis. And on these conditions, that's a good thing. <laughs> just an epic experience for sure. An East Coaster doesn't get this every day. And uh, to have guides like Ben and, and Dan leading us through this thing, you felt confident the whole way. Definitely like Dan said, the skis underneath you. I mean, these were what I would consider some pretty sketchy conditions and uh, felt that they held their own all the way down, which was really important to me at least. So uh, it was great. Joel, great skiing, brother. That was fun. We had a great time here with Dan Egan skiclinics.com at Big Sky, Montana, and look forward to um, doing it again with you sometime. Yeah, it was so good to make those turns, and, and it was fun. What a great group, huh? Yeah, it was fun. Great people that you had, great weather today. Couldn't have been better. Perfect. Well, join us next week on Big Sky Outdoors.